Hi, my name is Chad. I'm from EcoKing, and today I'm going to show you how to service an EcoKing boiler. Doesn't matter if you have an H model or a combi model, the servicing is the same. So to start, what I will do is take the cover off the boiler. At the top is one screw. You will take that off and then use something sharp to push down on the latch. So it's loosened, one hand on the top, one on the bottom. Pull the cover straight out towards you, set it to the side. Next, I'm going to gain access to the inside of the heat exchanger. So first thing I need to do is turn off gas, which it already is off. Undo two igniter wires. Pull down the screen, like so. Then, the set of pliers. I need to undo the gas pipe connection that's right here. Loosen it. Use your hands to take off the gas pipe now. Keep in mind there is a rubber gasket underneath. So in order to take this off properly, I always put my middle finger underneath when I pull out the, the silver pipe. So there we go. And the gasket comes off. Set the gas pipe to the side. Next, I have to undo two wires here. Ground wire there. Simply just pull off with some force. At the back, put your finger, your index finger, and pull and wiggle off the power wire to the fan. Now that that's done, take a 10 millimeter socket wrench, undo the four bolts right here. So I start off like that, undo the four. Now I will finish by hand to get them all off. Two, there's three, and the fourth one. I usually put them in my back pocket. Now that we have this whole, the four bolts off, the gas pipe off and the wires disconnected, we can take off the whole burner and blower assembly. Comes off like so. Now keep in mind when you take this off that this is a uh, known carcinogen and so is the refractory at the back. So we do recommend that you wear a, uh, a mask. Um, it's not mandatory, but we should make you aware of that. Now that you have the burner assembly off, you want to make sure there's no debris clogging up any of the pores where the gas actually comes out. If it's very clogged with dirt or sometimes there's drywall dust in there, you can take a warm cloth and try and clean out as best as you can any of the pores. Next, you want to look at the igniter, which is right here. That igniter should essentially look how it does now. Um, over time, the two prongs can separate, so they could look something a little bit like that. At that point, you can take out the igniter with two Allen key screws right here, and it comes straight out. And you can bend the igniter as best as your ability back to get it to the position that it's in right now. It should be a quarter inch off the burner and one eighth between the two prongs, like you see right now. If it's very badly warped, we would recommend changing the igniter. You can also clean the igniter with a little bit of sandpaper to make it a little cleaner than it is now. Yeah. Also, when you take off the burner here, this is the air intake into the blower assembly. You want to make sure there's no debris blocking any of the air intake holes. Also, you want to make sure that this rubber gasket is blocking all the holes that it is specifically designed to do. Now that you've looked at the igniter and the blower assembly, you want to actually look into the actual heat exchanger. You will notice over some time that there'll be some coffee grind buildup, we call it. Um, they're little carbon deposits at the bottom. What you want to do to get rid of those is take a nylon brush and wipe the whole way down to bring all the deposits to the bottom. Then use a vacuum to suck out any of the, the debris that's sitting at the bottom of the heat exchanger. And that's a simple clean out of the heat exchanger. Keep in mind again to try and stay away from the back white refractory you see. Next, once you've done that, what I would suggest you should do is come take a look at the condensate cup, which is on the far left of the boiler right here. 
and it's connected right here. We can pull off the, the pipe, the gray pipe, and then it's a quarter turn. You see there's a tab here and a tab on the other side. Quarter turn twist, and it comes straight down and up. It will be full of water and potentially some debris. So you just want to go to a sink, empty it out and clean out as best as you can just by running uh, pressured water, a tap water through that. Then when you reconnect it, when it's clean, you want to fill it up halfway with water before you reconnect it into the boiler. I will show you how to reconnect it into the boiler. You always put this pipe to the side here so the water will fill up and drain down this hole. So it's essentially you're creating a P-trap when you install it. So I'll show you what I'm doing here. This one. And once we get it up to the top here, you'll actually see the two tabs come in right there, like so, and do a quarter turn so that it locks in place. Last but not least on the regular yearly maintenance, we would recommend that you clean out this filter right here. It's a copper filter, it's called a magnetite filter. So to clean that out, you actually have to drain the boiler with water so please drain the boiler, isolate the boiler, drain it from water before you do this. Once the boiler is drained of water, you would take off this clip. One more clip right here, like so, put it to the side. And then the last one is this little cream colored clip here. It's on about 2 p.m. We'll push it back to about 10 and then it's loose. Next, we pull out from the bottom first. There's always gonna be some water still in the boiler. And then I slowly pull down from the top. And here's your filter. Over time, as I mentioned, it can clog up. If you wanna drain that out through a, a sink, run some water through it, just flush it out. Once you're done that, you'll put it back in and I'll show you how to put it back in. Um, you reverse the process. You push in at the top here first. And then the bottom will somewhat slide in. You do need some force to push it in fully. I could hear it kind of clip in. And this is one of the more difficult parts, but just make sure you go in at about 10, 10 o'clock and then pull it towards you to clip in. You heard it clip in. This clip goes right back on here, like so. And the last temperature sensor goes on there. And that's it. That's what I would say for your yearly maintenance on any cooking.